Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Okay, so tomorrow is the exam. Exciting. Uh, so I'll send out the exact room, but it's going to be in the Johnson building. Um, so to be clear and to remind you, uh, the way the exam will go is that you show up 7 p.m., a little before, but the exam starts at 7 p.m. I'm going to pass out a quiz. It's going to have three or four questions on it. Everybody has to do these three or four questions. Uh, after you've done that, you're free to go if you, if you like, but I encourage you to do the redo portion of the exam. So after you've done the mandatory part, then um, there'll be 15 options for questions for you to redo <coughs> because at the midterm exam is over quizzes zero, uh, one through seven and each quiz is supposed to have two questions graded on it and that would be 14. Two times seven is 14. But one of the graders graded all three questions on one of the quizzes. Messing up my mojo there. And so there's 15 possibilities. Okay. So you can see in the grade book which 15 were graded because it'll say, because you'll have a grade, for example, for quiz three, question two, and maybe another one for quiz three, question three, but not a grade for quiz three, question one, which means that it wasn't graded. Okay, so there's 15, 15 that are graded. What you need to do between now and the exam, and hopefully you already have mostly done, is determine which six would be best for you to redo. So in the exam, you've done the, you've done the quiz part, the mandatory part. Turn it in. When you turn it in, I want you to bring a list of the questions that you want to redo. So have it written down. Now, don't try to remember that uh, before you get to the exam. But nothing else can be written on the list. No notes, no scratch work, no nothing. Just the list of the questions you want to redo. You can choose up to six of the 15. You redo your six, and then you turn them in. Okay, and that'll constitute the midterm exam. <coughs> any question about any of that? Well, that's fine. Okay, <coughs> good. So, uh, because several students asked, yeah, you can do less than six if you wish. You, you can do zero. Okay, you, it, it won't hurt you. You won't be penalized for not doing any, but you also will not help yourself either. Okay. <clears throat> so last time we were talking about domain and range, or we had just started that, and now we're going to continue that. So section 3.2. domain and range. So probably best just to start with an example. <coughs> so try and draw a nice function here. <coughs> okay, so then I'm going to draw a few dots, some open, some closed. They're all going to land on integer coordinates. So I'll give you a moment to, to get that. Okay. <coughs> so my first question to you. What I've drawn, <coughs> is it a function? Yes. 
It is. How do you confirm or deny? Vertical line test. Vertical line test. Okay. So the vertical line test is how you determine if it's a function. And can someone tell us, remind us what the vertical line test is in plain language? most one, right? So then here's my vertical line. Uh, over here, are there any intersections? No, there's zero over here. Is that permissible? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then now here, uh, there's one. Yeah, one's okay. And then in here, there'll be zero, and then one, and then zero. That's all fine. So then, is it a function? Yes. because it passes the vertical line test. Then I could ask, well, in that case, is it Gesundheit? Is it one to one? So how do you confirm or deny this? A horizontal line test. <coughs> horizontal line test. So does it pass the horizontal line test? It does not. So the answer is no, because it fails the horizontal line test, which is to say that horizontal line test says every horizontal line needs to intersect zero, uh, zero or one times. So then. Uh, here's zero, so that that's fine. And up here, that's one. That's fine. So if here's zero, and here's one, why doesn't it pass? Yeah, because the quantification is every line. So here's a particular line that that intersects twice. So it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. <coughs> Okay. Now, how about the domain? So, we've talked about domain numerous times, except the way that I phrased it before was I gave you an expression, and I said, well, tell me the natural domain of this expression, and then you perform a calculation. Okay. Notably, I've not given you an expression, I've given you a drawing. So, the question is, is well, how does that what bearing does that have on answering the question? Well, so for conceptual purposes, I hope that you'll have uh, for a function to think of it like a machine that accepts inputs, not, not all inputs, but some of the inputs, and produces outputs. Okay, <clears throat> so the horizontal line represents something and the vertical line represents something. So the horizontal line, does it represent uh, inputs or outputs? The horizontal line. Inputs. Okay, And the vertical line represents outputs. So these are inputs, these are outputs. <coughs> so I could ask specifically for this for this specific function that we have drawn here is 5 one of the possible inputs? It isn't. 5 is not one of the possible inputs because if you look at x is 5, there's no point. There's no red point. So if I put, notably, if I put that vertical line there at x is 5, notice <laughs> that we're not touching the red. And we're also not touching the red over here at 5 million. Okay, or, or back here at negative 4 million. There's nothing over there. So to calculate the domain from a plot, the way that you do this is that you sweep <coughs> a vertical line
from negative to positive. And you're checking for intersection. <coughs> okay, so then back here, <coughs> there's no intersection. <coughs> Pardon me. There's no intersection back here. So we'll start sweeping, and then we'll start recording when we get intersection. So then, do, 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 do. Oh, that's where it's going to start, right? So is that actually an intersection right there? It isn't, because that, that's open. But if we move any amount whatsoever to the right, we'll start to intersect. Okay, so where, where is that? That's at input negative 4. And we have to write open round parentheses because that point is not included. Okay, so there we are, and now we sweep until we, until we fall off the edge. Okay, so then do, 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 oh, right there. So if we go any further than that, we'll have fallen off the edge, and uh, that point is included because it's closed. So that's negative 1. And I have to write square bracket because it's included. <coughs> Okay, now, I think you can all agree that in here, in the middle, right, in between, there's nothing in there, right, nothing in there, and then where does it start again? At two, right? And then it goes to how far? To four. So it would be union two to four. Any question about coming up with this? <coughs> okay, so domain, that's the set of all possible inputs. Well, then how about in that same language, kind of language, what is the range then? If the domain is the set of all inputs, then the range is set of all outputs. Okay, And if to compute the domain we sweep a vertical line negative to positive, that is to say left to right, then what do we do for the range? Yeah. We'll sweep a horizontal line. from negative to positive. OK. <clears throat> so uh, I could ask, for example, mm, how about 5? Is 5 one of the possible outputs of this function? No. You, there's nothing you could do to make this function produce a 5 for you. There's nothing you, you, could, you could do to make it happen. The way that you can see that is you come up here to y value 5, put horizontal line, and observe that there's no intersection right there. There is no intersection. OK. Could you possibly coerce this function into giving you a 3, into, into producing output 3? Yeah, because, because if we go to output 3 here, Notice that there is an intersection. So to get the function to output a 3, we'd have to input something like a 2.1 or something like that to get, it, to get a 3 to come out. OK. So then let's, let's do it. So sweeping down here, there's nothing down here. Then do, 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 do. OK, right there. That's the first, that's the lowest range value. Okay, that would be um, that would be negative two. And it's open. <coughs> okay. So here we are at negative two. And now we start sweeping. Do 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 Okay, that's negative one. Is that in the range? Is it in the range? 
I see yeses and I yeah, see no's. Can input. Sorry? You can. Input well, at one point, right? the question is, is can you get the function to output a negative one? Alternatively, are there any intersections yeah. with this horizontal line? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. But I bring this up because a lot of times when students are doing this in their head or on paper or something like that, they see that and say, nah, there's no intersection. Well, I agree that this one is not intersecting. No objection. But that one still is. Right? You just need one. You just need one. So we just continue. So we, down here we have one intersection. So that's part of the range. Now we have two. Now that's really in the range, I guess, right? That means that you can reach that value in two ways. Okay, so then, do, 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 do. Are we still in the range? But we just lost it. Yeah, we're still in the range, right? And then it ends there. So where is that? And four. <clears throat> Any question about why that's the range? Now, I'd like to ask a, another sort of conceptual question. Notably, what, I, what I've drawn, I think we can all agree, uh, kind of consists of two pieces. Right? That piece and the other one. Two pieces. So the domain kind of looks like that, doesn't it? The domain says, well, we got that piece right there. We got that other piece right there. And I can't simplify this expression any more than this. But the range looks like it's just one piece. Now why is that? Why is it that the domain looks like it's in two pieces but the range in one? <clears throat> well, let's wonder here for a moment. Suppose that I put way up here, we put a nice, really far away now, it's really far away. A nice green sun. And it's you know, shining bright. And it's going to cast a shadow down here. Right? Cast a shadow down onto here. Well, that's going to cast a shadow, and that's going to cast a shadow. How many shadows will you see? You'll see two shadows, right? You'll see over here it'll be bright and sunny. Then you'll be in a shadow, and then it'll be bright and sunny in the middle, and then in a shadow, and then bright and sunny. You'll see two shadows with the sun shining this way. <clears throat> okay, whereas, if instead of doing that, we put a, a red sun over here, and it's shining, it's really far away now, Okay, and it's shining. Its photons are going that way. Okay, and then we cast a shadow over here. <clears throat> How many shadows will we see from the red sun? Just one shadow. That's why it looks like this. So, the green sun casts two shadows. <laughs> so, the, so, the domain is going to look like it has two pieces. Whereas the red sun casts one shadow. So the range looks like it has one piece. Yeah? So if it's one to one, there's always going to be two pieces on the range. If it's one to one? <coughs> yeah, if it, well, n not, not even necessarily. I can make it have as many pieces as you want. So uh, for it, just to be clear, for example, um, I could give you kind of a crazy function that looks like this. I could say, well, I'm going to say that it's it's um, this line and then nothing, and then this line, and then nothing, and then this line, and nothing, this line, nothing, this line, nothing. 
So it looks like this. Okay, so is it a function? Yep. Is it one to one? Yes. And then now casting shadows going this way, right? You'll see a bunch of, you know, dash, 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 dash. Casting shadows this way, dash, 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 dash. So then here, here is a function that is one to one and the domain and range are lots of pieces. So you give me any, any number of pieces. You say, well, I want, can you give me one that the domain has a million pieces and the range has one? Yeah, I could do it. <clears throat> any question? Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, what, what you said is not entirely without merit. So what I did is I, I let me say it like this. I, I think that in your, in your mind you were probably imagining that you had to draw a piece without picking up your pen. If I, if, if I had the additional constraint that I couldn't pick up my pen, then yeah, then we'd be, then you could start talking, limiting the number of pieces. But the fact that I can, you know, do that, that makes it, that's a lot of freedom. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Um, so, <clears throat> let's consider, how about f of x is x to n, where n is positive and even, and we're going to compare that to f of x is x to n, where n is positive, well, where n is greater than 1 and odd. <clears throat> okay. So, you were requested to memorize the shapes of these functions. So, for the even case, you should be able to show me with your arms, right? How does, the, how does this one look? <laughs> how will it look? Like a parabola, right? Both arms up. Okay, so this one is like a parabola. Now, if it's, you know, instead of, that, that would be x to 2. It would be exactly a parabola. But if it was x to 102, then it would still be kind of like a parabola, except it would be quite flat near the origin and quite steep far away from the origin. But more or less, something like this. <clears throat> okay. So my first question to you is that, well, obviously it's a function, right? Because I wrote <laughs> f of x is blah, blah, blah. So I'll I won't ask if it's a function, but I will ask, is it one to one? No. Because it fails the horizontal line test. Which is to say, you just take a horizontal line here, this one, and you can see, ah, that has two intersections. Now, that's, that's geometry, but an, an algebraic reason to see why it has to fail the horizontal line test is let's imagine now, let's use a specific one, let's use the squaring function, the function which squares its input. And let's imagine that we turn this whole building into that machine, a machine that on the one side you put an input in, while it's inside it gets squared, and then 
and then the answer goes out the other side. So if you were on the output side, of, on, on that side of the building, and I was on the input side on that side of the building, and you couldn't see me, but you could see the outputs coming out. Suppose a 25 came out. Would you know for sure what I put in? No, because if this, is the, if this building is the squaring machine and you witness a 25 come out, what conceivably could I have put in? A negative 5 or a positive 5. So you couldn't be sure. Of, you couldn't be certain which, which, which thing I put in. That's what this is. Supposing a 5 comes out. Here's a horizontal line at line 5. You don't know what input was put in. It could have been, could have been that input or that input. Negative 5 or positive 5. Okay, so what's its domain? All reals. So, on, so you know that from two points of view. On the one hand, consider that expression if that's x to some even number, positive even number. What kind of things could you put in there? anything. And then, you know, when you look at this visually and you're trying to determine the domain, you might be a little concerned and say, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. Oh, I fell off the edge. But do understand that this is just a stylization, just a piece of this function. It goes, it's, it's, the, its plot goes all the way up that way, right? So if this was really big, you know, it'd be like, <laughs> it's going up, okay? How about the range? Zero to okay, zero to infinity, and do we include zero or not? Yes. <laughs> Which one? Looks like it has to be ordered. So <laughs> okay, so yes, I think is what you mean. <laughs> so that that's a mathematician problem, right? <laughs> so, as a is the answer yes or no? Yes. Which one? <laughs> okay. Uh, fine. So, can this is this is the set. The range is the set of all accessible outputs. So, there's nothing negative in the range. And then right there is where the range starts. Right there, there's one intersection at y is zero. And then for any higher y, there's two. Okay. And then. How does this one look, the odd one? So if this one, is two arm, if this one is two arms up, then this one is one and one, right? Like this, this kind of business. Okay, so then it's like, okay. So is this one one to one? Yes. Yes, because again, it's the horizontal line test. You ask, you ask yourself, well, is there a, is there always zero or one? Yes. In fact, for this particular function, there's always exactly one. So, to make the building analogy again. If, if this building was now the machine that cubes its input, and you were on the output side and I'm on the input side and you can't see me, and you witness an 8 come out, do you know what I put in? If you witness an 8 come out of the cubing machine. Yes. Yeah. What must I have put in? Well, what about a negative 2? Ah, if I put in a negative 2, a negative 8 would come out. Right? Okay. So how about the domain? All reals. And how about the range? All reals. Any question about these? <coughs> okay. How about we play this game again? And we'll play it with the radicals. So how about f of x 
is nth radical of x, where n is even versus f of x is nth radical of x when n is odd. <coughs> so again, these are functions that you were requested to memorize their shapes. So, at least for me anyway, again, when I'm trying to think about these visually, uh, I just remember in the first place that there's this parity issue, even versus odd. And then for the even case, I just think about the smallest positive even number. What is the smallest positive even number? Two. And then second radical is so common that it has its own special name. What's the special name for second radical? Square root. So in your mind's eye, can you imagine what the square root looks like? Or, or alternatively, there's, there's a significant prohibition on the inputs to the square root. What is it? Non-negative. So square root looks like this. And so all the even ones look more or less like that. Notably, they're not defined on the left-hand side. <coughs> so how about this? Is this one to one? Yes. yes. OK. Uh, what's its domain? Zero to, Zero to infinity. Now, you know the domain from two directions. On the one hand, because it's an even radical, you know that the argument has to be non-negative, greater or equal to zero. But now even ignoring that for a moment, just ignore that, and just have a look at the picture. Just look at the picture and ask, well, is this stuff over here a part of the domain? No, there's no intersection over here. Where will there be intersections? zero to infinity. And then what is the range? Zero. Also zero to infinity. Any question about this? Okay. Then, now, what's the smallest odd radical? Not, well, not quite, because one's not a, not, a, not a radical number. Three is, right? And so this, this odd radical, all of them will take their shape, their main idea, I guess, from the cube root. So the cube root's similar to the square root, except what? Negative. Yeah, you got the negative part also. So something like that. We can ask, well, is this one to one? Yes. And we could ask, well, how about the domain? <coughs> All reals. So you know that from two positions, right? You know that algebraically because it's an odd radical. It accepts any argument. Then alternatively, you can ignore the fact that it's an odd radical and just look at the picture for a moment. What vertical lines will intersect? All of them. Okay. Then the range. What's the range? Again, all of them. Okay. 
So you can imagine we could carry this on ad infinitum, right? I draw another picture and then we do it again. Right? So then uh, let, let's not do it exactly. Let's just sort of in our minds I do it. What if I were to draw absolute value? Well, is it one to one? No, right? Because what's the characteristic shape of absolute value? A V, right? So in your mind's eye, imagine that V. Is it possible to situate a horizontal line that intersects it more than once? Yeah. Yeah, you can make it happen. So then it's not one to one. Similarly, domain and range, right? You, you could do it. Okay. Good. Uh, maybe we'll do one more. Do f of x is 1 over x to n when n is even and greater than 0. versus f of x is 1 over x to n when n is greater than 0 and odd. So these, again, their name is the reciprocal functions. And they have this parity issue. So this one, the smallest positive even number is 2. So this one's going to be like <coughs> 1 over x squared. So you should be able to, with your fingers, you know, how does it look when you draw it? Anybody? No takers. <laughs> yeah. Two of them. It'll be like the volcano one, right? It'll be two pieces, and they'll both be going up. questions as always. Is it one-to-one? -one? No. No, because you can see that, for example, this horizontal line cuts it twice. Uh, what's its domain? Not quite. Except zero, right? Oh, yeah. So not zero. So you can see that zero is not permissible algebraically because algebraically you'd be dividing by zero, and it's not permissible geometrically because you can see that that y-axis right there sneaks all the way up, right, and never, never touches. So negative infinity to zero union zero. To infinity. Alternatively, alternatively, if I had a big bright red sun up here and it was shining down and casting a shadow, you know, down on, onto my hand, you'd, my entire hand would be in shadow except for one single point of light passing through. Right, right there. You'd see that one. Uh, so then how about the range? 0 to infinity. Do we include 0? No. We can't include 0 because, um, <clears throat> well, we're dividing by a number. There's no number that you could divide 1 by so that you'd get 0. So to make a physical analogy, if we had a pizza and we cut it into 8 equal size pieces, that's a pretty good piece. If we did it into 800 equal size pieces, it's not a very good piece, but it's a, it is a piece, right? And no matter how many equal size pieces you cut it into, 
abstractly anyway, everybody gets something. Not ignoring physical constraints like the fact that pizza is made of molecules. <laughs> and if you cut it enough, then it will cease to be pizza. OK. <clears throat> uh, this one, the odd case, is where one of the arms is down. So is it one to one? Or will it be? Yes. How about its domain? its range. Same as the domain. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> okay, so another kind of function that's um, very useful. They're called piecewise defined functions. Piece defined. Functions. So here's a good example. So suppose you have a cellular data plan. And uh, maybe your data plan is that um, for any amount of megabytes between 0 and 1,000, it's $20. Okay, so that's just the, the base cost of the plan. And then uh, for every megabyte over 1,000, you pay a nickel. Okay, so how much? So let's write that down. So $20 for 0 to 1,000 megabyte and then five cents uh, per megabyte five cents per megabyte for anything over a thousand okay so, for example, how much would it cost for 736 megabytes? 20, right? How about, what if you just say, forget it, I'm checking out of social media for a month, and you just put your phone in your drawer? What a month that would be. Uh, what's that going to be then? 20, right? What if you do 1,001? Yeah, it'd be twenty dollars and five cents. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to write uh, a function that does this. So to write a function that does this, the sort of what happens is that the behavior changes depending on how far you went, essentially. So the cost, which I'll write as C for cost, cost of X megabytes. Well, this would be $20, $20 when the number of megabytes is between 0 and 1,000. And then we need to write something else for when the number of megabytes is more than 1,000. So what do we need to write? <clears throat> so for example, in your head, you did, you did 1,001. You said, well, that'd be 20 and a nickel. How much would 1,010 be? Yeah, 20 and 50 cents. So what's the formula then? 
Okay. 20 plus 0.05x. Okay, let's think about that. So could that be right? So this is when x is more than 1,000. So is that right? Let's think about it for a minute. So for 1,001 megabytes, I think we're all convinced it's going to be 20 in a nickel. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not a nickel times x, it's a nickel times how, however, however much you went over. Yeah, so x minus 1,000, right? So if you did, say, 1,200 megabytes, then how much did you go over? 200. So, so what this is, this is how much you went over. Okay. So, just to write a few of them real quick, how about uh, C of 537? And now let's ignore the story. Pretend that I just somehow hit you with that. And all you have to look at is just this. Then how would you go about evaluating this? Mm -hmm. So there's two clauses. There's two clauses. And the question is, is for this input, 537, which clause does it match? The first one or the second one or neither? The first one, right? 537 matches that clause. So it'd be $20. How about C of 110, or 1100, I mean? Now what clause do we match? The second one, right? Match the second clause. So that'd be 20 plus 0 0.05 times 1,100 minus 1,000, which is 125. Okay. What about C of negative 8? Yeah, neat. it doesn't match any clause. It doesn't match the first one. It doesn't, doesn't match the second one. So what's the co correct way to respond to such a question? This is not defined. So it's not defined according to this mathematical definition here. And of course, it's not defined according to the story either, right? What would that mean? I downloaded negative 8 megabytes. I guess that means that the cell phone company downloaded from you. I'm not real sure what that means. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, so as a plot, let's have a look at what this function uh, would look like. So, if this is C of X, and this is X, then its behavior changes at a thousand. So what's going to happen everywhere between zero and a thousand? What is the output value? Everywhere in here. It's a straight line. In, in, in particular, it's horizontal. At 20, right? So that is to say, for any amount, any usage between zero and a, thou uh, and a thousand, the cost is 20. Then what will happen when you go beyond 1,000? It's going to move up. So it's going to start going up like a parabola, or what? A straight, line. a straight line. In fact, for every one megabyte you move over to the right, how far are you going to go up? Five cents. Right? So it'll be 
be a, a line that goes like this. And the slope of this line is 5 cents per megabyte. Okay, so now I can ask the same questions. Is it one to one? Yes. No. Oh, sorry. No. No, it's not. So that part, that part's one to one, right? But that's not a question, right? The question is, is it one to one? Which is to say that suppose that I showed you your bill and said that it's twenty dollars this month. Would you know how many megabytes you used? You wouldn't. It could be zero, any number between zero and a thousand. So it's not one to one. Uh, what's its domain? Zero to infinity. Zero to infinity. Including zero. Including zero. Uh, zero to infinity. And then what's the range? 20 to infinity. 20 to infinity. So now, besides cell phone contracts, this is, these such functions are quite, quite common. So an another one that we're all subject to currently is, say, the federal marginal tax rate. And so if you, if you make between negative infinity and I think something like $17,000 or something like that, your tax rate is zero. And then if you make from 17 to whatever else, then your tax rate is something. And then if you make in the next bracket, a little more, next bracket, a little more, etc. A piecewise defined function for the federal marginal tax rate. Okay, so have a nice Wednesday. See you tomorrow. <laughs>